Hi there, Elise Dewsbury here from New Musicals Inc. And I'm. this is going to be the 73rd episode of my monthly vlog, How to Get No Feedback from Elise. Now, this month, I want to talk about the musical montage, and in particular, the passage of time montage. Now, uh, many of you who might have received feedback sessions from me in the past may have heard me suggest that you try using a musical montage, particularly to get through a section of your musical that involves a passage of time where we don't actually need all of the details. We just want to get the gist of what happens over a period of <clears throat> hours or days or weeks or even years. Now, I personally believe that that kind of a montage needs to be anchored by some kind of recurring musical passage. It could be a quatrain, it could be one line, it could be any, you know, any number of things, but it ties everything together, and yet it evolves over the course of that passage of time. Uh, but I think that a musical montage can and should also contain highly, uh, several perhaps different highly contrasting musical moments to highlight certain moments in the sequence. So it isn't all just, you know, the same A-A-B-A-A-A-B-A throughout, although that could be your anchor. Now, I've been wanting to give some kind of a more concrete example of what I'm talking about and how it can be done. And I'm sure that there are likely other examples in the standard rep repertoire, but I have to say that one, I happen to know one writer who I think has mastered this technique in show after show. And that would be Canadian lyricist composer, Leslie Arden. Now she's much better known over there across the border than she is here in the States, but honestly, that's our loss. So I asked Leslie if she could send me a sample <clears throat> of one of her Passage of Time musical montages. She has so many to choose from, but she sent me one that's called Through Hands, and it's from one of her newer musicals called Maul. Now, Maul is based on the novel Maul Flanders, which uh, written by Daniel Defoe, which was first published in 1722. But this loose adaptation, which I had the honor of being involved with dramaturgically in early development, is actually set in modern times and tells the story of a girl who's had a really, really troubled early life and eventually winds up as a sex worker after going through foster care and everything and tries to fight her way out of that sex worker life and try to, uh, uh, you know, attain a goal and in particular to help uh, her younger foster sister that she's met along the way and, and grown to love really deeply. Um, now, many teams writing teams, if they're given the task of having to tell the story of someone uh, like this, where we need to know their story from a very early age uh, through to, uh, but the meat of the story actually happens more when they're like 18 to 25, but we need to know a lot of that backstory in, in order to understand them. So a lot of teams would choose to write either a prologue that shows us that early part of her life. Sometimes people will take the whole first act or a good portion of the first act to lead us linearly through the person's life in a biographical kind Kind of way. Um, I, I think I've done a blog in the past about one of the problems with biographies, and that's certainly one of them. Um, but people would, sometimes teams would feel like they need to, uh, they need to show us all the important scenes about how she lost her family, she was shuffled about in family care, and basically abused. And often this, this way of doing it would mean you'd, you'd have to employ uh, two or maybe more actresses to play the part of this character as the character ages throughout. But Leslie, in this particular moment, chose a very different route and started her show with our lead character, who's currently calling, she's up, she's currently about 18 years old-ish, and she calls herself Maul now. You'd have to see the show to understand exactly why. Um, and she's just been arrested for prostitution, and she's under questioning by a potentially sympathetic officer. And after much coercing, she decides that she will tell him her story. And she does it by conjuring up this sort of a flashback sequence in which we see Maul and the officer, James, watching her life story unfold in front of us. Now, we don't need to actually see Maul as a young girl, but we know during this sequence that the Sarah that everyone is discussing as she's passed from foster home to foster home is the Maul that we're now seeing watch this take place. Now, the sequence uh, starts when Sarah is only about four years old, and in seven minutes of stage time, it takes us right up until she's around 18 to the present moment that we're in, more or less, and tells us everything that we need to know about what she's been through and what she perhaps could have been in a different life, which of course hints for us as to what her want is gonna be going forward in the show. And it also establishes several musical themes that will recur and return and develop throughout the rest of the show. 
So what I'm going to do now is play for you a demo of the song and, and I'll make sure that the lyrics are going past on the screen so you can watch them and try to follow along in the story. But basically to set it up for you, Maul, our lead character, and James are watching and sometimes commenting as the rest of the ensemble takes on all the different characters of social workers, foster parents, teachers, and, and other students as Maul goes through hands to present day. Now, note that this is also intended to flow easily between scenes, so there's not intended to be big scene changes or blackouts from one moment to the next. Each moment flows directly into the next, um, because you can indeed trust your audience, as Leslie does, to understand the passage of time that's happening, as long as you take as much care in the storytelling through the lyrics and the dialogue and the musical motifs. So here now is Through Hands from the musical Mall by Leslie Arden. Sarah, is that your name? Not anymore. Sarah, go get ready, cause it's your lucky day. Sarah, grab your teddy and we'll be on our way. Honey, take my hand and we're homeward bound. No, it's really nice. Paradise. Lots of other kids around and all of them just like you. You're never gonna be alone again. Tell you what we're gonna do. Now. We've got toddlers here. She'll bully them. It's not fair to the others or to Sally. Sarah, just one more no. week until again. Have I got a home for you? Sarah, have I got a home for you? Sarah, don't you worry. Come on, dry your eyes. No, we're in a hurry. Never mind your goodbyes. I've got a surprise. <laughs> Little darling, you're in demand. So we're on our way this very day to meet. But this just isn't working out. We were hoping a child would help our marriage. Maybe if we could have had one of our own. Have I got a home for you, Sarah? Have I got a home for you? Well, actually, no, I don't. And my caseload is too heavy, and I'm exhausted. And you know what? You're her problem now. Take that chip off of your shoulder if you want a home base. Kid, you're getting older, getting harder to place. You're a tough case! Hey, come on, we're going, so grab your stuff. No, we can't repair your teddy bear. And Jesus, I'm not paid enough, but Sarah, we shall persist. <sighs> Someone's gonna dare to care for you. Where did I put that list? Oh, yes, here it is. Here's a loving family. We were hoping for, uh, someone a little... Well, she's too old. They'll be taking custody. You know, we thought about it. I know this is a change of plans. But we think now that maybe we, we want, want a boy. boy. Hard to tell I used to be an optimist. Not the only disillusioned one. Shut up. I'll take her. All things come to those who wait. Sarah, go and meet your fate in the perfect home for a special little girl of eight. Oh, she's special, all right. She breaks things, she steals things. She's always getting into fights at school. None of it was true. She labeled me a special needs kid so she'd get more money for looking after me. And she lies. Plus, we have a new girl joining us today. Let's give Sarah a special Pearson Public School welcome. Welcome, Sarah. Sarah can't keep up with the curriculum. She's a little special, I'm afraid. Sarah doesn't have a single little chum. Her attitude is wearing and it's worrisome. Sarah isn't studying as Sarah's dumb. We think it would be best to hold her back a grade. Class, let's give Sarah a special Fair Meadow Elementary School welcome. Welcome, Sarah. A Stanfield Middle School welcome. Welcome, Sarah. A Central High welcome. Welcome, Sarah! <laughs> Thank you, sir.
her for joining us on Parents' Night. All of Sarah's teachers will concur. Yes, sir! Sarah's having trouble telling wrong from right. The little imp is simply impolite. Miss Congeniality, she isn't quite. And no one knows exactly what to do with her. With Sarah, with Sarah, Sarah. May I talk to you for a minute? Mr. Clare? What are your plans for college? Well, I'm a shoe in for Harvard, but I'm holding out for Yale. I'm serious. I like reading. That doesn't mean I'm college material, Mr. Clare. You're special, Sarah. And your voice is sure and strong. Never mind the pupil's pace. Slow and steady wins the race. And you're gifted, Sarah. That's not what everybody else says. Maybe everybody's wrong. That would make you wrong too, wouldn't it? <laughs> There's a little spark there deep inside That Sarah tries so hard to hide. I can see the glow. Sarah, let it grow. Take a breath and blow. Yeah, well, thanks for the pep talk. Your math marks are dragging you down to below average. Our tutors can help you get those marks up. To average? I'll think about it. You're special, Sarah. Deserving of everything and more. There's a world of words that wait for you. I'll hold the door while you walk through. Then, Sarah, all you have to do is catch the wind and soar. Way to mix metaphors, Mr. Clare. There's something else. It'll count towards your volunteer hours. We have ESL students who need help. Would you consider taking one on? Can I do both? Have a tutor? Be a tutor? Yes, you can. Oh. Then... Okay. Great! Come with me to the office, I'll give you the schedules, and we can work out a plan so you can... Have I got a home for you? Wait! Sarah, have I got a home for you? But I want to stay here! Sarah, she'll be moving to Sarah's big bad. Your foster mother said you hit on your dad. What? Boy, is she mad! No! Nobody's fault but your own. Fuck you. Move your butt, you little slut. One more home my job is through for Sarah. You're almost grown. Sarah, we're almost done with you. Soon you'll be on your own. Oh, thank Christ. Bid your foster dad adieu. They'll be looking after you. Say hello to the Caldwell, Sarah. And your foster sister, too. You're not alone. We're all sick of this routine. Please don't make us intervene in the perfect home for a special girl of sweet 16. So there you go. And in my opinion, that is an amazing example of how music can shepherd us through time and give us the information we need, only stopping very occasionally for very limited and concise, but very important dialogue moments, while it also sets up themes that will recur throughout the show. For example, the um, You're Special, Sarah, that little um, theme that gets sung by the teacher, Mr. Claire, it gets repeated later in the show when one of her foster brothers is actually trying to seduce her. So the music takes on a menacing tone, but with the same musical theme. And then it happen happens again later when Sarah falls truly in love with one of the other sex workers in her brothel and it becomes a true love song and so on and so on. So I'm gonna continue to encourage teams to consider writing these kinds of musical passage of time montages to get through large swaths of time where we need some information, but we don't need lots of set changes and long complete scenes. We just need the movie version of the calendar pages flipping past like they would in a movie. So musical montages, they're awesome. Until next time, toodaloo.